Enos Petri is in Gothenburg to get hands-on, or rather hands-free experience with autonomous driving, although we do have a human driver on board, too. So, Andreas, I have a driver's license. Why am I not allowed to drive a car? Yes, this is uh, an early prototype of our autonomous vehicle, uh, and the system is not complete yet, so I still have to supervise the system, uh, and I still have to take care of some scenarios by myself, but it will uh, give you a preview of the future of commuting. At first glance, this looks like any other Volvo S60. In fact, it's fitted with radar sensors, a front view camera, and GPS. Let's see how it copes with traffic in Gothenburg. On the Beltway, Andrea shows us how the car drives itself on certain sections. I will activate the system now. So I just uh, push this button. So now I can uh, let go of my hands. And the system will, will uh, adapt to the traffic in front. It will reduce the speed. Uh, when necessary, and uh, it will follow the lane. I have removed my feet from the pedals, so it handles acceleration and brakes, and uh, also the steering by itself. Autonomous driving is gaining traction in the automotive world, and Volvo is not the only car maker researching the possibilities. What makes the Drive Me scheme in Sweden special is that it boasts an all-round package. It's a joint initiative hooking up Volvo's technology with the city of Gothenburg, as well as government agencies. We offer the space of the city, uh, so that they, the cars have somewhere to, to, to drive. So we are going to use the ordinary roads around the city of Gothenburg, so that's our uh, input to the project. But also we, we are very keen on seeing the results and see how we can integrate this in, in uh, city planning. Traffic on the Ring Road can get really heavy during rush hour, exactly the right environment for an autonomous car. It allows the driver to sit back and relax and devote that time to other activities. It also allows present infrastructure to be used more efficiently. Autonomous cars are able to drive at a short distance to each other. In addition to freeing up traffic space, that saves fuel by profiting from the preceding vehicle's slipstream. We expect uh, the infrastructure to be more compact and that we can use the land in a better way. That the lanes may be narrower and uh, that we can avoid uh, congestion in a far better way than today. And of course that uh, we expect also with uh, autonomous driving fully implemented that we have almost zero accidents and incidents which will also contribute to a, a sustainable future. The car does not yet have sensors to perform a 360 degree scan so for now the driver has to do the lane changing. When parking however the driver doesn't even need to be in the car at all. This is a task the cars can do completely independently. Autonomous driving opens up new opportunities on the stationary traffic front. Self-parking cars will mean more efficient use of parking garages and less frustration for drivers. A look ahead to the future. Instead of endless circles in the garage next to the mall, Shoppers can drop their car off at the entrance and then use their phone to activate autonomous parking. The vehicle sets off and uses sensors to localize and navigate itself to a free space. Once the driver is done shopping, he pushes a button on his cell phone that tells the car to return to the drop-off zone. In this scenario, it's the car that picks up the driver. Enos is sure this development will make driving safer, but as it ultimately depends on the driver, there is an attention sensor. It monitors the movement of the driver's eyes, even if you're wearing glasses.
sollte das Auto feststellen, dass der Fahrer nicht in der Lage If the driver ist, is unable to retake control because they've fallen asleep or is unwell, the car will engage certain measures to alert them. That might be a pull on the belt or shaking the seat. If the driver fails to respond, the car will exit traffic and park itself. Wird das Auto aus dem fließenden Verkehr rausfahren und selbstständig zum Stillstand kommen. The attention sensor is one of a number of pre-existing assists that Volvo has taken to the next level instead of investing in complex and completely new technologies. It's that approach that the car maker hopes will help keep the concept at a reasonable cost for consumers. The aim is very clear. Our society is changing. Our needs are changing. The needs for the transportation system are changing. This is why we are here, to make this revolution, to give people back their time and do this in a safe manner and also thinking about the environment. It's important that the package is affordable. Otherwise, we cannot make any impact on the society. We cannot give you, uh, our customers, the benefit. Volvo is also thinking of its own future too, of course. Future cars catering to future needs are bound to sell well. But then there are the legal complexities. Who is liable if an autonomous car has an accident? a challenge but um, if we want development we have to see that our leg legislation is following the development in society and laws has been changed before so there is no laws who, who are written in, in stone you have to change laws when the development takes place but of course you have to guarantee uh, the safety as well. 2017 will be crunch and hopefully not crash time for Volvo. The Drive Me scheme envisages letting loose 100 cars on selected streets in and around Gothenburg by then. The autonomous fleet will explore the social and technical challenges involved in hands-free driving, the next step in the evolution of the driverless car.